So there's a protocol for uh, people giving presentations that I like to follow. Uh, when guys come up, we're going to try to give them like a really loud welcome, like make people want to come in that aren't in this uh, meetup today. So we're going to start with me. I'm going to give a presentation really quickly about iPixie and running CoreOS outside of the cloud. So I'm going to go over here and I'll come back up. And we're going to do a big rock star welcome. And we're going to keep doing that for everyone else, right? I'm going to try. I'm going to go off stage. Just pretend you can't see me. Yeah. Wow. This is awesome. Like, awesome crowd here. Um, I'm a bit shy. So um, I'm going to give a presentation about running CoreOS outside of the cloud. So it seems like a lot of people here have experience running CoreOS in, in, in the cloud. How many people actually run it on some cloud platform? Bare metal. You guys still have bare metal servers? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I thought I was the only one. Um, so the thing about uh, CoreOS and iPixie is that, you know, the idea here is that you want to probably boot a large cluster of machines. And doing this over the standard methods of like Pixie and TFTP kind of put a strain on your network if you try to boot, as I say, a thousand machines at a time. TFTP doesn't scale that well in that case. So iPixie offers us a couple of more options. Ideally, we can do things like boot our images over HTTP. And some of the tools that CoreOS provides out of the box for you allows you to actually automate a lot of the iPixie process at initial, at initial boot. Um, and this kind of gives you that cloud-like experience on your bare metal hardware. Um, I didn't get a chance to bring in my data center, so we're going to do most of this demo on VMware. And we're going to talk about the current process now that you have for iPixie. And if some of you have seen my GopherCon talk, I kind of gave some advice about how not to lose your day job hosting your iPixie scripts on pasty.org. Mm -hmm. And what resulted was a open source kind of an iPixie server for doing this. So the things that we actually want to do with our iPixie process is we want to come up and give a, a Pixie boot script saying what images we want. Uh, we have the option of providing the SSH key so you can log in on initial boot and the CoreOS images we want to build. So the first thing we do is we launch a iPixie server. And I have a simple server here written in Go. And what it does is it serves up um, static files, which are the iPixie images, and a, and a dynamically generated iPixie boot script, because you may want different settings for different servers. And currently what we have in this implementation is everything is backed by a file system. So we have this CoreOS iPixie server, and if we were quickly to do like a tree to see what we have underneath there, we'll see what we have is this new concept called a profile. So this is something that I kind of got from the cobbler world, where you want to have a way to associate machines to their iPixie configuration. And then here I have a bunch of CoreOS images. So basically, this is the same directory structure that you get from the upstream channels. And here I have a bunch of cloud uh, config configs. And in those, this is where we do all of our things we want to happen automatically at boot time. So this is where you do things like set Docker up to listen on a remote IP. Um, add users, additional SSH keys, that sort of thing. How many people are using Cloud Config in their environment now? Yeah, so if you're not using Cloud Config with CoreOS, it's actually, to me, one of the things that, um, the thing I like the most about CoreOS as opposed to using like stock Ubuntu. Like Ubuntu works really nice in the cloud. If you're using something like Amazon, you kind of use that experience already where you give it metadata and a lot of things happen on boot. But CoreOS kind of has it just built in and it doesn't require a specific cloud to use those features. So with Cloud Config, and we'll look at one of these Cloud Configs since a lot of people may not have a lot of experience with it. And Cloud Config, by default, um, it's this nice little YAML format. And you can think of it as almost like CloudFormation or if you ever use something like Ansible. You basically can declare a couple of resources. There's like an etcd type of resource that will help you kind of bootstrap a cluster. There are a couple of placeholder things in here that can consume metadata value, like public IPs and your private IP address. This works really great in the cloud. And if you don't have a cloud environment, there's like a script that will kind of determine what your network card is and take that IP address. And then you have the ability to, to define system D units. So you can imagine a world where um, if you really want to automate this thing fully, if you had a bunch of Docker containers, you can have 
you know, the pre-start, bring down the container, make sure that it's available on the system, and then make sure that it's always running and kind of chain things up together. So you can take a raw machine and bring in all the containers that you need and then just be there at boot time. You can also do things like bring in SSH keys from, let's say, GitHub. It, re it re supports the GitHub API. Or you can just bring in regular files and put them in the right place. So we're going to look at the process really quick. And if you guys haven't had experience with iPixie before, um, iPixie has a couple of options for using it. You can actually flash your network cards. I don't recommend that because if you do it wrong, um, you're, you're probably out. Like vendors don't support that sort of thing. Or you can use like an ISO, or you can use a um, Pixie image that you can just serve from DHCP and kind of chain the whole process. In this demo, we're just going to use an ISO. And we're going to talk about things you can do with the ISO in a moment. So I'm really just going to go through really quick. We have this iPixie server booted up. And what we expect to happen now is I'm just going to take a, a virtual machine. And what I'm going to do is just mount an iPixie ISO to kind of simulate the process you would do with DHCP. So one of the things to keep in mind with the iPixie process is that you don't require, like that's me, um, you don't require uh, DHCP, which is cool because there's some environments where people actually don't want DHCP running around the network. Um, you can actually pull images over HTTP, so you can host them in different places and pull them over. Cloud config for automations, like a first class citizen. And you can also build custom iPixie images, and we'll show what that process looks like. And then this one, this one setup will work for physical and virtual machines. In this case, we're going to use VMware Fusion. So the implementation we're going to look at that we have today is CoreOS iPixie server. So there's a concept of profile, static file serving, and it's all backed by a file system. So it's pretty easy to get started with. So all I'm going to do right now is just reboot this virtual machine. And I'm using a custom Pixie image, meaning I don't have to type any of the boot parameters that you see in a lot of the iPixie docs. So what I have here is I'm using an iPixie boot script, and we'll take a look at that script in a moment. And here I'm just iterating, calling the Pixie server, giving it number one. The first thing that I'm passing over is my uh, serial number. So this is how it looks like in VMware. The second thing I'm doing is passing my U UUID that you get from the BIOS. And the third thing I'm doing is giving it its MAC address. And what happens today in the current system, it matches one of those three things to a profile on disk, loads it up, figures out what version of CoreOS you want, either a specific version or you want to pin yourself to a channel. And once that happens, you go through the whole boot process and your machine should be up. So a couple more seconds here. And now we're up. Oh, and it tells me that this is Core 0. And a lot of this magic happens because of Cloud Config. And if we look at the Cloud Config for this particular instance, configs, and I'm actually pinning it to this one called core zero. And here I'm just specifying the host name explicitly. And there's a, you, can always, you can already see the problem here that this is hard coded, right? This is all static. So if I want to build another machine, I basically have to copy and paste this one and move it over to another one. But it's kind of what we have right now today. And we're doing some things like setting up our etcd cluster using the discovery service. If you haven't used that yet, it's a good way of bootstrapping your etcd cluster. And I'm specifying a couple of units. I use uh, CoreOS for local development. So when I'm writing code or building software, I like to have like a local instance of MySQL, things like that. I don't use Vagrant because I have things like Cloud Config that kind of makes that really easy for me. I have a Cloud Config that sets up all the things that I need. And one thing that I do out of the box is usually set up Docker to listen on TCP so I can run the Docker commands locally from my local machine. And I just make sure that everything is started and I write some OEM data. And now our machine is up and running, right? And at that point, you can kind of just log into it. So one of the things you do there is you put your SSH key in, and there you go. You have access to the machine. You can start doing things. And with iPixie, um, what it seems to do is I usually give my machines 4 gigs of RAM, and half of that is used, uh, gives you ability to store things. You will run out of space quickly. You build in a lot of containers. But for most of my development work, I can do everything without a local drive. Um, there's good documentation online if you want to do persistence, like netboot the image, but have persistence like your containers, any state that you've developed over time will stay on the local disk. So that's the Pixie process, not very exciting. And that was the demo. And thing we want to do now is kind of formalize this, right? So there are some people that are starting to use this thing, and now they want more features. Have any of you guys ever used a tool called Cobbler or Foreman to manage like bare metal servers? 
Cool, so they offer a lot of features and it kind of gives you like a nice place to see all the inventory for your machines, manage some of the metadata for around those machines. And this is something that I want to do with iPixie D. So iPixie D, the goal is to provide a web UI for some of that stuff. Um, replace the file systems with like Bolt DB, so it's like an in-memory uh, key value database that works really well in Go projects. And I want to have a unified API first and then build a CI, CLI and a web on top. And I want to dynamically generate those cloud configs so we can reuse some of the metadata from the machine. And I also want to do uh, CoreOS syncing from the actual channels themselves, because right now you have to download the files. And I'll give you a quick preview of what that looked like. I actually wrote this little web interface uh, this weekend. So the first thing that I did um, was write the API, and I implemented a very simple client on top. So if I hit API, of course, I get all the API data, just raw JSON. And the very next step that I did was started building just a drop-dead, easy HTML-driven uh, web UI on top. So very simple. I can edit and delete machines. Um, the profiles are automatically updated from the database. So we've removed the file system out of the mix. And you can create new machines here. There's not a lot of error handling. Uh, but the experience should be much better for building that automated ways of dealing with this stuff. And you pick a profile and you create, and now you just have more machines. Doing the same thing for cloud configs. You know, you can create a cloud config. And what we're trying to do is expose all the options that you could possibly do. Because a lot of people run into problems figuring out, like, what are all the options that I can pass in? So all those will be exposed here. You can manage all your SSH keys here. And that's a very simple process. Just gives you a little screen to say, hey, upload your key. And we'll save it there. And there's your key. You can edit it. And we're going to do the same thing for cloud configs. So that's pretty much it. And I'm welcoming feedback on how this should actually work to make people's jobs easy. So there is a GitHub repo. It's Kelsey Hightower forward slash iPixieD. If you have any input or you want to hack on stuff, if you know JavaScript, I will buy you a beer if you make that web UI much better, because I'm allergic <laughs> to JavaScript. Um, and that's it. You can find me on Twitter, or you can hit me at my email address there if you have any feedback. Thank you.